All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the Ordev Conference. We're doing interviews all this week um, on the stage here in Malmo, Sweden, and I'm joined now by Hannes. Hi. And I've, I've heard rumors that you are, you are augmented with some biotechnology. Indeed, I am, uh, I am a biohacker, Stephen, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I find the concept of integrating uh, man and machine uh, most uh, interesting. So what, what are some of your favorite um, biotechnology hacks that people have, have put to use on their, on their person? Um, well, uh, what I, I'm personally testing out at the moment is to have an RFID chip implant in my hand. And uh, with this, I aim to uh, get rid of having to use keys. <laughs> Doesn't so that sound helpful? It's a tag which you have inserted into your hands. Exactly. It's a tag that we've been putting in uh, cattle for the last 20 years. And now uh, there is actually an interesting use in it for humans. I mean, you, can, you put it in cats and dogs so they know how to run into uh, their little, uh, own little door. So does it work with normal RFID scanners? Exactly. You can, uh, any sort of Android app or uh, normal uh, door openers where you would normally have this kind of thingy that you have on your keychain. What's it called in English? Um, key fob. A blip or, or yeah. 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 So this is to replace them blips. Yeah. Just, you know, with your, your hand that has, now has a chip inside of it. Exactly. And I hope I will be joined by others shortly. We're trying to get a little movement uh, here in Sweden with people upgrading themselves with RFIDs. <laughs> Upgrading. Right. Well, do you have a better word for it? No. No, that's a good term. So when you, when you do stuff like that, like let's say inserting an RFID chip, does it leave a scar where you, you've inserted it? So, uh, I have a tiny little scar on my hand. It's somewhat bigger than a uh, normal injection needle that is used. But uh, I expect this to go away completely uh, in a month or so. Okay, so you just got it added recently. Yeah, this is uh, two weeks, just about two weeks. Okay. And um, any side effects from having the RFID chip implanted? Uh, yeah, nightly seizures for uh, two, three hours <laughs> per night. <laughs> But that's worth it, right? <laughs> that's totally. No, seriously, just kidding. Uh, no, not, not at all. No infection, nothing. It's, so it's really been uh, just giving my body uh, a new way to communicating with uh, machines and computers around me. So I find this uh, very helpful. Cool, cool. Um, what other sort of stuff can you do to, to augment yourself? Uh, well, um, there is... Um, Oh, that's interesting. Well, you can hack your uh, biology in various ways. I mean, mankind has been hacking our bodies for a long time. Have you, have you, uh, have you been vaccinated against something? Yeah, 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 I believe so. So, uh, if we had invented vaccines today, we'd probably call them a body hack, right? <laughs> so, people have been doing all these things for, uh, for uh, hundreds of years. And uh, I just think this way of integrating uh, digital devices and sensors with the body. It's just uh, a new way of doing what we've been doing for a very long time. So it's so really not that controversial. Was a, if there was a program to sign up to be a, a cyborg, would you, would you be first in line? I'll be happy to try it out. <laughs> I mean, the good thing with most of these things is that they are reversible, right? I can, I can take it out if I want to, if I want to go off the grid when the Skynet, uh, you know, keeps popping up, <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we pull the plugs. So, uh, and for, uh, to come back to this implant, it really doesn't inf interfere with my, uh, my body in any way. It cannot com communicate with my body. So uh, it can't really do a lot of harm to me. Yeah. And that is, I think, an important distinction compared to, for example, pacemakers or other devices that people wear in their bodies that actually interact with the metabolic uh, systems uh, and therefore are potentially harmful in a different way. Yeah, so this is, you know, from your perspective, your body's perspective, it's inert, but then it gives you additional communication with the outside technology world. Exactly. And I think, therefore, I may not qualify as a cyborg because a cyborg, I would be able to interface directly with my, uh, with my implants. So, uh, yeah. So what, what are there sort of interesting... Um, Examples of biotechnology use have you seen? 
Um, well, uh, we had a fun little workshop recently where we tried um, transcranial direct current stimulation. Have you tried that? No, I can't say I have. Well, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a technology where you put uh, electrodes on different places in the skull and then you put a very weak direct current uh, through the head. And depending on where you put those electrodes, you excite uh, different parts of the brain. And there are some uh, scientifically uh, made tests uh, in the UK where they have uh, proven that wearing such a brain stimulation device actually improved the learning, mathematics and the language. But of course this requires further testing. But as a biohacker I'm really curious just to try out these things. And cool. you know what it did to me? No? Well, no. I, I didn't uh, put it on and read uh, French words, so, but it cured my hangover. <laughs> that day. And that was pretty awesome. So uh, I imagine that uh, if, if anything, if someone can invent the proper cure for hangover, then we may have that, a winner. That, that's going to be a very popular one. We will, we will see that popularized in no time. Right. You can buy it on the Bionifican website. Yeah. So, so RFID in your, in your hand to open doors or access stuff, maybe that won't quite catch on in mainstream, but hangover remedy. Right. That's, there is, that's we know a there's a market, so I probably <laughs> should sell them tomorrow morning here at the conference. What do you think? Yes, yes. I, you, instantly famous. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of the conference, you're giving a session, I believe. Was that already happened uh, or is it later I, today? I've given one session. Uh, I'm going to have another session this afternoon. I think it might be more interesting to speak about the upcoming one. Um, yeah. I will be talking about uh, sort of far-reaching exponential technology trends. I will explain uh, the concept of the singularity, which is a somewhat controversial uh, uh, point in, in time where computers bypass uh, humans as uh, the most uh, capable beings on Earth. So you may or may not want to believe in the singularity uh, as such. Are I don't, sure, I'm not sure are you I sure do. sure that hasn't already happened? <laughs> it's a matter of definition again, but... <laughs> This particular technological singularity is, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, what I find it useful for is it, it's a term that allows us to discuss the future. Uh, it's a point that we can discuss, okay, what does it mean to be human and uh, am I just this meat body sitting here or am I something else? Am I uh, an extended being that is sort of existing on social networks and other sort of, is my memory all in my head or is it distributed already in, in the cloud? I mean, it's very interesting questions that really uh, relate to our fundamental human nature and how we see ourselves. And I find that very interesting and relevant to discuss. Yeah, no, so that's interesting kind of, um, um, it, it, all, it almost borders on, you know, impacting folks' view on religion and life and all of those topics, but tackling it from a technology perspective is very interesting. It is. I mean, uh, it is religion. You can always use religion to try to explain things, but technology gives us new powers. I mean, there, one way of putting things is that, uh, I, I don't know which famous technologist who coined the phrase, we are the gods now, because we humans, we can actually manipulate uh, biology and we can manipulate life itself to such an extent that we really have the power of gods in that sense. At the same time, we still carry around our primate monkey instincts in, our, in the behaviors that we have. And I find that a somewhat dangerous uh, combination. <laughs> <laughs> yes, probably your, most people's view of an all-powerful being is not a monkey. Well, I wouldn't want to have monkeys in charge of running a planet <laughs> like ours with uh, uh, nuclear technology and nanotech and all that stuff. So maybe we need to do something with upgrading the humans too. And I think that's, yeah, that's well, the area I'm you're, into. You're on the right track. You already got your first upgrade. Uh, uh, so so what else? A few more are needed, right? What else, what else do you have planned? Well, um, I, it, it's difficult to talk about specific technologies, but as a concept, I believe that since technological development is so fast and the developing trends we see in artificial intelligence, there is the amount of data that surrounds us 
I mean, our sort of primate brains, we can't deal with all this data, right? We're already struggling. And maybe we need to give ourselves some new functions to be able to manage and deal with all this data. Yeah, I need a memory chip myself. Right. My, my ability to actually long-term store stuff is decreasing the older I get. Yeah, and it's, it's also related to all the information that sort of is uh, flushing over us all the time. A, a good friend of mine, she, <clears throat> she uses the joke when she, she meets someone and f she forgot uh, their name. So, oh, my name server is down. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a neat analogy for... A <laughs> uh, Very nice. Uh, yeah. That'll be the next implant, a personal name server. Indeed. Wouldn't that be helpful? With so. face recognition. Exactly. So maybe you can get one from Sony or I don't know who's, who else is exhibiting around here today, but... Yeah. Hey, yeah. So, so we got our, our second product. So the first thing you're going to do is the fix for the hangover, and then you'll have the name server. Right. Then we need a <laughs> neat little name server that tells us who, who, who we're facing or uh, like if I... Uh, to remember who, who you're quoting and... Uh, yeah. So there are many potential upgrades for... If we humans, if we don't want to become irrelevant in a high technology society, we probably need to follow this, uh, I mean, to, to follow the development of artificial intelligence, because otherwise, I have a vision, Stephen, that we humans, we will be as relevant as the mountain gorillas in Uganda are to uh, earthly civilization. So they sit in their reserve, they eat uh, the leaves, and they have a pretty good time, and they probably fight within the families or clans. But the real business in the world, they have no insight. So we humans, we don't want to be put on the sidewalk or on the sideline uh, in the same way. So then we need to keep up in some way. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good point. So you don't want, you, when the singularity comes, you want to be part of the computer generation which carries things forward. I find that more exciting <laughs> than the alternative. <laughs> Cool. Very nice. So thanks very much for taking the time out of your schedule here at Ordev to give a short interview. Well, f thanks for having me. And um, you can find more interviews on the Night Hacking website at nighthacking.com. And we're going to be here all week doing interviews at the Ordev conference in Malmo, Sweden. So thank you very much. Thanks, Steven.